Thank you so much for attending today's special uh, session of On the Shelf with Tulare Public Library. My name is Carol, and I'm here with my boss, Heidi Clark. <laughs> Thanks Hi, for everybody. joining us today, Heidi. Yay. Yeah, this is fun. And All right. So see, we are socially distanced in our office. <laughs> we, so we are. Yes. Our we decided we wanted to have our masks off so you could see our faces while we were talking. And hear us clearly. Absolutely. So we chose uh, some books that are currently available and on the shelf so that if you are interested, you can give us a call, put them on hold on our app or online and get them right away. All right. Uh, all of the books that we have chosen are by female authors and our special reason for that is, is that it is March and it is Women's History Month. So we're really excited about that here at the library. We have a special display. So um, hopefully when you come in and check out these books, you'll take a look at that um, and see who inspires you because it just has all kinds of women um, from history that have made, a, I think, a big difference uh, in our lives here. So I'm going to get started with my first title. They're all behind me. And my first one which I was very excited to see was available and on the shelf is called uh, Girl in a Band. It is by Kim Gordon. And um, in case you didn't know, uh, she was in Sonic Youth with her husband. And uh, so they were a big, big part of that band, which was a huge, huge part of the whole music scene that you know, sort of leading up to Nirvana and all kinds of huge bands. And I completely missed out on Sonic Youth. <laughs> Not completely. I just wasn't at the time in my life in the 90s I just and, and late 80s. I just wasn't wasn't into that scene completely. So um, it's really interesting for me to have enjoyed this book so much because I wasn't really into that band. And so I don't really know the music all that well. So I do consider this um, a, a good introduction to the book for people who aren't fans. I think people who were fans or are fans, they're clearly going to love this book. It's going to be very popular if you are a fan of Sonic Youth. Um, but even if you weren't into that music and you don't know anything about that band or know the songs, I think you will find this book interesting. I know I did. Um, she is definitely an amazing artist, not just musically, but in other areas as well, and a, a super amazing woman. Um, married to her husband and co-worker from the band for 27 years, and they did have a child together, and they did end up splitting up after 27 years, um, which was a huge uh, surprise to everyone in their lives, because who stays together that long and splits up, and and then went on to, you know, just continue being who she is. So she was always true to herself. And I think that's a huge lesson for everyone, not just women. Um, but that's one of the reasons I really liked the book. I, I did mark one little page just to give you an idea of what you're getting into if you do choose um, to check out this book. So this very small um, paragraph that I'm going to read to you is in chapter 29, the beginning of chapter 29. One of the songs off Goo, which was one of their albums, was a tunic song for Karen. Karen Carpenter had interested me for a long time. The Carpenters were such a sun-drenched American dream, such a feel-good family success story like the Beach Boys, but with the same roiling darkness going on underneath. Obviously, Karen Carpenter had a strange relationship with her brother Richard, a great producer, but also a tyrannical control freak. The only autonomy Karen felt she had in her life, she exerted over her own body. She was an extreme version of what a lot of women suffer from, a lack of control over things other than their bodies, which turns the female body into a tool for power, good, bad, or ugly. So that's just a little taste. If you're interested, like I said, it's available now. Heidi, what do you got? All right, my first title, it's called All the Days Past, All the Days to Come by Mildred D. Taylor. And it's a play both on this month's 
Women's History Month, but it's also um, a good celebration of African American History Month, which was February, because Mildred is African American author. Her series, Let the Circle Be Unbroken, um, Road to Memphis, and I've gone and forgotten the other one. Hold on, I'll find it for you. And um, yeah, Ro Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, Let the Circle Be Unbroken, and Road to Memphis are the three main titles. There are several smaller novella types were written for children about the history of a Black family in the South um, during the different eras. This picks up the story. It's classified as a young adult novel, but the content is definitely appropriate for all adult ages, as it starts in 1943 when Cassie, the main character, is um, dealing with the fact that her brothers are going off to fight in World War, I, World War II. And it is, carries on through 1963 and the civil rights movement in the South. Cassie is a very strong female character. She's very bright, she's very determined, and she becomes, she gets to a point where she doesn't want to tolerate what's going on in the lives of Blacks in, in her world. And so she, you know, she and her family move, a large portion of them eventually move north so that they can have more freedoms after they, her brothers come back from the war. Um, Kathy, Cassie goes to law school, a white law school, and joins a white law firm in Boston. Um, but she never forgets where she comes from and the importance of family. And so it deals with how Cassie comes of age in a world that is making some very drastic changes in how society deals with people of color. And I think there are a lot of really interesting things and some very sad moments, but it's also some very joyful moments. So if you were a fan of um, Pearl of Thunder or any of the other Mildred Taylor stories, I think that you would very much enjoy where Cassie is going now. And it, if you are interested, please stop by and check it out because it's a lot of fun. I'm absolutely interested, but I'm not gonna check it out yet. I'm gonna give the other patrons a chance. Right? If it's still here next week, I'm getting it. <laughs> That's your warning, fair warning. All right, well, speaking of books that are appropriate for adults, but they just happen to be on our young adult shelf, I've got one of those. Uh, you might recognize this author, Angie Thomas. She wrote The Hate You Give, which is one of my favorites. Um, I just knew I loved her writing from the first chapter. And this is her second book. It is a great option for those of you who, like me, are currently waiting for Concrete Rose. That came out in January, and there's just a long list of people waiting to get their hands on that book. We have lots of copies throughout the San Joaquin Valley Library system, but uh, there is a wait. So while I'm waiting, I took a look at On the Come Up. I actually read it a long time ago, but <laughs> some books are good enough to read more than once, and this one definitely is. Um, some people are a little put off by uh, what the book is about, which is basically the main character is uh, coming. She's sort of growing as a rap artist, and some people think, oh, I don't like rap. I'm not going to read that one. But really, if you like poetry, you will absolutely enjoy this. And because it's a book, you read it any way you want. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not like listening to music. So I don't think that that should deter anyone from uh, picking up this book. Again, it is excellently written and takes place in the same neighborhood as The Hate You Give. Um, and I just, I don't wanna do any spoilers. So I'm just gonna say, while you're waiting for Concrete Rose, on the come up is on the shelf, no waiting. <laughs> All right. The Grim Reader, Kate Carlisle. This is the latest in Carlisle's series of the Bibliophile Mysteries. Her main character, Brooklyn Wainwright, is a bookbinder. She repairs damaged books, usually rare, unusual, and interesting books. And all of her books come tied to a mystery, usually a dead body somewhere along the way and some various other things. 
Secrets. This is the latest in the series, um, which is now, I don't remember how many volumes it is, several volumes. And she also has another series um, that has to do with home renovations, which I thought is interesting, but that's okay. So bibliophile, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is volume 14. One of the interesting things about this series is that it was initially published only in paperback and is now coming out in hardcovers. So that means that she climbed the ladder to make it into the top tier of publishing, I believe. Um, Brooklyn and her new husband, Derek, are um, on their way home to Brooklyn's parents' location. They live in a commune, but it's not, you know, not typical, not what we typically think of when we hear that word commune, which is sort of a 60s feel good, whatever. And it may have started out like that, but it's really evolved. And they are putting on a book festival. And so they get there and Brooklyn's mom is in charge of the festival. She's one of the co-chairs and Brooklyn is gonna have a booth on how to find books and do some other fun things. But of course, we can't get away from the mystery angle. And so there are a couple of dead bodies that turn up and somebody's gunning for Brooklyn's mom, which makes Brooklyn very anxious and frustrated. <laughs> she says it's one thing for her to feel, you know, to, to have to cope with all the dead bodies, but for her mom and her mother-in-law to have to cope with the dead bodies this time is kind of hard on her. <laughs> um, one of the fun pieces is that Derek Stone, Brooklyn's husband, is British and was with MI6 and now runs his own security firm. So he has some skills that come into play when it comes to dealing with the various miscreants that they run across in their endeavors. Um, the book that's the highlight of the festival is Little Women. So those of you who have a love for that story, here's a way to sort of tap into it. Uh, one of the pieces at the festival is going to be a musical rendition of Little Women and that ties into the mystery as well. So. If you'd like a good book themed mystery, check it out. I think I know someone who wants to read that. <laughs> <laughs> I should bring that home to my mom, but again, I won't. I'm gonna give everyone a chance. <laughs> Gotta be fair. Right. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that one, Heidi. Well, I have one more uh, on my little cart behind me. And I'm sure you recognize this is an older one. Gosh, I don't remember when it came out, but it was very popular when it came out. And so I looked throughout San Joaquin Valley Library System, there are 40 copies. <laughs> it's a lot of copies of one book. Now I do realize San Joaquin Valley is huge, but that's a lot of copies. So this was really popular in its day. You may have already read it, but in case you missed it, we've got one. And if somebody else gets a hold of it, there are plenty others. <laughs> um, this is Tina Fey's book, Bossy Pants. Um, I, I wanted to choose something that was nonfiction. A lot of people avoid nonfiction. And um, so I always like to choose one. It is hysterical. It's really funny and just true and honest stories um, that, that make you laugh as well as they are inspiring. I think that she has a very unique way of sharing her experience of sort of having that rise in responsibilities in her job, in her field, and becoming in charge of other people and how she handled that, how, how it is being in charge of men as a woman and, and, and especially the writers when she was working on Saturday Night Live and things like that, that are stories that I think are applicable to anyone who is currently in charge of anyone else. Um, and so that can be a lot of women, whether it's at work or at home. Um, <laughs> so it's, yeah, and, a, and I mean, a lot of, of books that are about that are, especially for me, maybe a little too businessy. I, I like that it's a comedic way to learn about working with other people and being in charge of other people and just being bossy and having to tell people what to do. So I recommend it if you never read it, pick it up. Um, the cover is just, you can't forget it. It's so creepy with the arms of a man. <laughs> it's the worst. Um, on the back, her dad 
Don Fay said, I hope that's not really the cover. That's really going to hurt sales. <laughs> so that's my last recommendation is. I did find that cover kind of odd. It is, it's so odd, but um, it's funny. Thanks. All right. Now my last title for today is an older title also, but one of my favorites and one that I've had a lot of success recommending to different people is Maisie Dobbs by Jacqueline Winspear. Uh, she is a, also, it's a mystery, suspense -y kind of a thriller, not thriller, because it's not creepy. They have no scary stuff here. Only a little bit of mystery and suspense. Um, set in England, just after World War I. And Maisie is a young woman who was raised by her father who was widowed when Maisie was very young. And you find out through flashbacks in this book. This first part of this book is told in flashbacks. So I always advise my readers of that fact because it can be kind of disconcerting. So what flashbacks means is that you go back in time and then you come forward to the present. So there's a lot of back and forth initially to lay the, the groundwork for this story. But um, when Maisie, Maisie is eventually sent, um, her father decides that, it's, that she's getting older and it's harder for him to help her and to do some of the things that are appropriate for young girls in that time. And so he's, she goes in service in one of, as a maid in one of the big homes. And, but Maisie's very bright and she and her cleaning duties and other things because she lives in, um, finds the, the library and spends a great deal of her off work time, late hours in the library. And one day she gets caught out by the mistress of the house. But instead of being angry, the mistress sort of takes Maisie under her wing and the family you know, so supports her and helps her and they send her to college and she does a bunch of other things. And eventually she sets herself up as a psychological investigator. So she's not a detective, but she addresses mysteries and concerns from a psychological perspective, rationalizing how things happen and what might have happened. Um, as I said, this is the first in the series and, you know, is, is a very fun read if you are a fan of a good historical mystery piece um, with a sympathetic character. There are a lot of references to um, the impact of World War I on Britain and what, you know, what the fallout was. The series is now up to the time period leading actually into the Second World War. So you can tell that it's covered a great deal of time. And over that time, Maisie grows and evolves quite a good deal. Um, but even in this book, as we watch her grow from, from a child to a, a young woman, to a young businesswoman, there's a lot of growth and evolution that comes around. And so if you like a good historical mystery with a sympathetic character, then I would recommend this book and the rest of the series to you. And, we thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this edition of On the Shelf. Uh, check out our other renditions. And don't forget to check us back in when the next one comes up. All of these items are on the shelf today. So go ahead and place your request. And if you have any more requests, don't forget to reach it out to us on our website or through our Facebook or YouTube channels. And we will do our best to see that those items are made available to you. Thank you and have a great